Hey, what's up everybody? Ace Fangirl here, and welcome back to Hatful Boyfriend Holiday Star bonus episode number two. So a couple things I want to uh, say, actually really only one thing I think that I want to say before I start this. Uh, you may have noticed, and I didn't notice until I was actually booting up the game just now, that I did not get an achievement for finishing the um, the first bonus episode, the Pigeon Shrine bonus episode where we went on all the fun dates. Um, that was because in order to get the achievement, I did a little research, and you have to go through the dates, uh, both human and pigeon form. So I will do that off screen and I'm going to get that achievement because I'm a completionist and I have to have it. This time, we are going to be going through the radio episodes. Uh, I'm not sure what this feature is actually, so it's going to be interesting. And we're also going to look, um, through the gallery and check out what's in there. I think there might be some special stuff waiting for us, possibly, or we're just gonna look at some of the fun memories we had during this game. I really don't know. But, uh, that being said, let's get started. Oh, this looks fun. I don't know what this is. Um, radio, part one, living with birds. I missed that little jingle. <laughs> The how and why of seeing pigeonations? Question box. Hi, Ryota. Oh. <laughs> this is fun. We know who you are. He oh, we're having a question corner. Yeah, what what are we doing? In the how and why question box, I'll be answering the letters you've all sent in. Oh, is, this is so cool! Did we do- did they do this for the original game? Like, when this was originally released, they took questions? Not just questions, though. It looks like we'll be doing shoutouts, random asides, all sorts of things. I'll read Ryoten, unless I show up. It'll be pretty relaxed. Bear with us. Because this is the first time, I've made sure to pick things which don't spoil any of the bad boys' love route from the first full version. Okay, good, so this does not spoil anything. Don't- you can watch this, you're allowed to watch this one. If you haven't finished yet, spoiler landmines can be scary. But don't worry, there won't be any of those here. Let's get started then. Now, for our very first level letter from one aviophile. This is a historic moment, everybody. Ah! What? No, I'm gonna be wearing the wedding dress. Duh. <laughs> oh, he's so flustered. That's so cute. Oh, I did. Did I? What did I say? No. No, that's not true. That's a lie. That, that'd that be the worst thing, actually, that ever happened to me. No. That's horrible. I would hate that. But, I mean... <laughs> yeah. That's... Yeah. Yeah, that'd be fun. Anyway, next letter. Miss Bird Love. Let's, did... That's a good question. Mm-hmm. Okay. What about you? Oh, good. Oh, thank God. See? You don't need to worry. When his ending in the original game, he was super worried that, like, he was gonna leave me alone, like, if he passed on before I did. And so now this isn't an issue. Oh. Oh, shoot. He's a rock dub. Mmm. <laughs> Maybe not. I take it back. That's okay, baby. Oh. Yeah. No, it's okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's fine. We'll figure that out, babe. Don't worry. I love his little headphones. I wish I had some. Kanako Mikan. Oh, cool, that's... <laughs> oh, thank you. It, I mean, it is. Uh, probably, I mean, I live in a cave. I was told to answer anything for, for Diana as best I could. Um, Diana's really something. She's been wild and rugged ever since we were very young. I've always admired her too. Oh, so cute! She never really complains, so I'm not sure I know of anything that's really given her trouble. Whoops, I just accidentally moved forward before I meant to. The only thing I could think of would be the time her den got hijacked. Whoa! That is terrifying. Did I beat them up? It looked really tough. As long as they're living creatures, there will always be turf wars. She said the fight with the boss jackal led to lent an entirely new meaning to the phrase domestic violence, so maybe that's a good example of a quarry which gave her trouble as well. Then again, in the end, they reconciled and she was welcomed into the jackal tribe as a brother, so maybe it was more like a pair of Yankees having a sunset fist fight on the riverbank than a hunter and her prey. The next letter is addressed to Nageki, from one hatful Ka Charis? Karis? 
Wait a minute, is this the name of the virus? What do you wish for on Tanabata? I've always, I always felt sad not seeing your card. I think we should have him answer him. Yay! Nageki! Nageki, are you here? Of course. What? Oh good, I was worried I'd have to call you on the announcer. Is that microphone on? <laughs> yep, we're on the air right now. No, no, don't go! Wait, don't leave yet! No. <laughs> no, Nageki. Just answer one question, please. Yay! Okay, fine. Thank you. This letter was asking if you make wishes on Tanabata. I'd like to know what you wish for, too. Oh. Dr. Iwamine always makes one. Oh! Did you make them when you were younger? Aww. What sort of things did you wish for back then? Oh. Okay. Well, that's nice. I'm always hoping for the same thing. I know how it is. <laughs> I, I okay. Oh yes, yeah, sorry for holding you up. See you. Bye. Good talk. He really cares about his family. I wonder what they're like. They must all be quiet, calm birds like him. The next one is for San. Oh great. It isn't signed. It's a little long, but I'll try and read it in one go. Okasan, 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 Okasan. Ah, 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 ah. Okosan, 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 Okosan. All right. Ah, hiff, 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 sniff, sniff, smells. What? I no, I'm not gonna read that. I'm not. I'm not reading that. <laughs> I refuse. Um. Um. You know, I I accept the fact that I'm in pigeon hell. I'm not this bad. I <laughs> I don't understand. I'm scared. Kind of scared. Oh my god. Ah, I felt like I was gonna suffocate reading that. Oh. Oh. Aww. I'm happy for you, person whose love has been delivered. Oh, that's cute. Good luck! I think he understands. That's good. On that note, the last letter here is for San as well. From one Ori. I love Okasan too much, and my heart is turning into a Hajo heart. Is it easy to keep doves at home? I want an Okasan all of my own to stroke gently around and around. My goal is to have him ride on my shoulder. I know it isn't a casual decision, but do you think I could do that? No one around here has kept doves for some decades. The pet shop does not sell them either. Where did Okasan come from? It is a mystery. Would you terribly mind telling me? Um, I think I should start by talking about San's actor. This will get a bit meta. San is modeled off a dove named Okasan, kept by the creator. Oh, that's so cool. Of course, his portrait is a picture of the bird himself. In reality, he isn't interested in putting it off. Please don't try to feed a dove pudding. <laughs> Real talk, though. Seriously. Doves aren't particularly hard to care for. Anyone who's kept a budgie or a sparrow or anything should find it pretty easy. A racing bird would be a little more difficult, but for a fantail or the like, a fairly small cage is fine. A rabbit cage works very well. However, doves aren't very common pets, so there aren't a lot many veterinarians who know how to treat them. Doves are usually very healthy and rarely get sick, but you might want to make sure there's a clinic nearby which will receive them just in case. They're not common in general pet stores, but there's usually a section for doves in places that specializes in birds. Have a look around. Good luck, Miss Odie. I hope you can have a wonderful birdie life. That's all for today. Thank you all for sending us letters. Yay! Alright, we'll go on to the next one right now. Alright, let's do the second episode. The Pigeon and the Partridge. dun 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 dun, dun. The How and Why of St. Pigeonations, question box. Hello everybody, this is Koala Ryota from class 2-3. It's time for the second round of the question corner. Independent programs like this don't have to worry about viewer numbers, so we can take it easy. It's very relaxing. Aren't you feeling relaxed? Yes, I am. Thanks, babe. Anyway, this episode will be mostly spoiler-free as well. Spoilers for the BBL will probably start showing up in the second half, I think. Alright, so keep that in mind. I'm glad that they put this on here. That's actually very considerate of them. 
At any rate, everyone can listen to this without worrying. Let's start looking at letters. This time there are three for me! Yes! First off, one from an anonymous individual. You look very good in girls' clothes, but how do you feel about cross-dressing? Is getting paid just an excuse? How do I feel? I'm not sure, I only ever cross-dress at work after all. It'd be sort of like if I worked at a convenience store and put some sort of emotional weight into the act of wearing the apron or something. It would be very strange. And as for it being an excuse, well, that seems odd, too. It's just a normal part of life to me. <laughs> Aw, babe. On to the second letter. This was from one Areko. I want to have Kuleen be my personal maid. Yeah, me, me too. <laughs> There's a time limit, but you can ask for me anytime you're at the cafe. I'll be waiting. Oh, <laughs> I'll be there. And now for the third, from Kuleen, Kuleen Sexual. Wow. I wonder if that's the person who comes by every Friday. To Colleen, you're always so cute. What kind of clothes do you like? You can tell me, right? I'd like to see you in more than a maid amigo clothes, too. Like, maybe a sailor uniform? Haha. <laughs> Come again soon, master. I don't usually do this outside of the cafe, but... I had them get me a sailor uniform for this, so I'll be back in a minute. Yes! Let me see. Let me see, let me see. Oh, so cute. I tried making bento. Will you eat with... Oh. Babe. <laughs> You're so cute. This is the first time I've worn a sailor uniform, actually. It's a little drafty for this time of year. That was literally the cutest. The next one is for Dr. Iwamine. Yay. Let's see if I can get him in here. Oh. Whoops. Oops. No. Oh, his music even cut in. No. No. You get out of here. Well, don't leave. You need to. What? That's too much of a mortality rate. I'm not in enough of a hurry to play Russian roulette, you know. A and don't go changing the background music like that. Thank you for changing it back. Honestly, I can never think of the dance of the Sugar Plum Fairy the same way again. This is a question corner, Doctor. There's a letter for you and me. me there's a letter for you and me. M may I read it to you? Yay! No, we're not paying you. I probably don't want to know what you ask for. But thank you. It's from someone named Yuya. It was sent on December 6th. Ryota's birthday is the 3rd, right? Happy birthday. And the doctor's is the 12th, so happy birthday to him too. Thank you, Yuya. They do. Actually, I didn't even know when their birthdays were. Oh no, I'm, ter I'm a terrible person. May I ask you a favor? My birthday is the 7th. Could you celebrate for me? Just one congratulations for me will be better than Christmas and New Year's cards combined. <laughs> Yay, another December child. Happy birthday, Yuya. You should say something too, Doctor. Ugh, uh, you're so mean. Uh, not that I expected much from you anyway. I'm sorry, Yuya. I'll congratulate you for the Doctor as well. Happy birthday! Nit! <laughs> Jazz hands! What? Oh, okay. Crash in the party. I feel like something else just got slipped in there. Anyway, happy birthday! I hope you have a good year. No. I'm good. D don't even joke about that sort of thing, Doctor. Um, seeing as the Doctor's here, I'll read a few more of these. This one's a question for the Doctor from Just Pudding. Do you have a CECOM alarm in the infirmary? Do you, Doctor? Okay. Musical guide. Well, how why is everyone just showing up in here? Uh, um, I think not, Mr. Golgard. The Doctor doesn't seem interested. And that's where I hide. Okay, bye. Ah, uh, he left his business card, even though we didn't ask for it. I don't have any use for it. What about you, Doctor? Yeah, really. Time for the last one. This is from one helplessly in love. I am helplessly in love with round, adorable chikar partridges. I pity you. Do all chikars have the Doctor's suspiciously fluffy face? What do you think, Doctor? <laughs> you know, he's got a solid point. It's from someone outside the school, so maybe you can answer less aggressively? I, I mean, I am inclined to actually agree with the doctor on this one. Um, this is hard. I suppose the doctor is right. There are differences between individuals. Maybe the best way to see would be go to go to the avian zoo in Kakigawa or Kobe? Chief Partridge's eyes aren't completely round, so they do look a little bit lethargic or maybe suspicious. 
Also, when they hold their heads out, their necks are surprisingly thin. They can look very vulnerable when they're taking dust baths, too. Do you take dust baths, Doctor? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. You must do it every once in a while, then. A defenseless dust-bathing Dr. Iwamine. A fascinating idea, if only because of how hard it is to imagine. I think I'd like to see it. Yeah, I, honestly, I don't want to see it. Yes, yes, I know. Ugh, great. Yes, we're done. Sorry for holding you up. Thank you. Why is everybody so uncooperative? I hope I can have someone who will play along next time. Then again, there are so many letters for the doctor. I'll have to bring him back on at some point. Maybe next time I should get him a present or something to butter him up beforehand. That's all, folks. Thank you for all the letters. This is so much fun. <sighs> Alright. Let's go. Part 3. Special talk show. Um, listen, that sound gives me, like, bad, bad flashbacks, okay? So, M Mr. Nanana, if you could please refrain from playing that sound. Seriously. Besides, who even asked you to come? I'd much prefer Ryota. I'm not gonna read for you, because I don't like you. I guess I'm gonna read for him. Great, this music too- well, this is actually kind of good music, but- Good evening, folks. I am the grand artist who has offered his life, his very soul, up to the imagination. Nenenetori. <laughs> Welcome to our special time, which you shall spend with me. I don't imagine there are many listeners who don't already know it by heart, but allow me to give a brief introduction of my glorious exemplary career so far. Once I was the ace of the Second Optical Ordnance Division of the Hawk Party Research Organization, and now I'm a manager at the, at the Crow Party. There's a Crow Party? I didn't know that. And also, chief editor of the popular Golden Weekly magazine. I doubt anyone in the world is as busy as I am. You are all incredibly grateful that I am taking this time out of my schedule to conduct a question and answer session, of course. <laughs> Mr. Nanana! Mr. Nanana! Please open the door! <laughs> Sakia! Wait, how loud is this right now? Oh no, it's fine. Ah, oh, Sakia. <laughs> it must be locked in the inside. What do we do? At this rate, an entire chapter of the radio program is going to be overrun with some unfortunate golden pheasant disaster. You in there, open up this instant. You were bad enough in the ligamentees short. Are you planning to ruin this too? Do you think an outsider like you will go unpunished for this? We won't stop at charges of trespassing, you fool again. That's right. It is awfully loud out there. With peanut gallery mind keeping its fevered gibberings to itself, fevered, fevered, I don't, I don't actually know how to pronounce that word. Hmm, <laughs> this racket is in no way beautiful. Let me put on some music. <laughs> now then, let us begin my artistic question and answer session. The first is from a young lad by the name of Hatomi is my waifu. When are you going to discontinue Golden Dove? It's gotten really lame and just feels like it's run out of ideas with all the new characters he introduces. Hey, what, what is this? Do you know how long Mr. Taka- Oh no, the music! Labored in obscurity, even after he made his debut in high school. Living the ignominious life of a non-serialized author. Even when he could get serialized positions, he was never popular in questionnaires, so he'd always be dropped. This music does not go with this right now. You cannot possibly comprehend how he suffered. And then, he came to me, to Golden Weekly. He was the first artist whose serials worked out for me. We struggled all this way together, like unfortunate twins joined at the hip and so shamelessly forced to run in every three-legged race ever. Do you have any idea how much sweat, and how many tears, and how much of his own life blood? Probably killed him. He is born in a golden dove? You don't, do you? You know nothing of the joy of a long-running series, you disgusting philistine. This song, man. I actually almost cry every time I hear it. So don't go to just talking about discontinuing it, jeez. Aw, we didn't even get to the good part! <laughs> I'm sorry, I should have let that play a little bit longer, I thought it would keep going. Ah. <sighs> well then, next one. Things sure seem lively in there. 
I wish he'd opened the door already. On the contrary, he seems to be ignoring us entirely. I can't believe a disgrace like this is allowed on campus. It's most vexing. Yuya! You're gonna help us out, right? Oh, yes, wait. <laughs> wow. Um. First of all, babe, did you really think it was necessary to bring your gun? Not that I am, like, complaining, because we might need it. Don't tell anyone I said that. But, babe, you know, second of all, this music. I don't think we've heard this before, unless it was, like, in the first episode, the last time he had the gun. Yeah! No one asked for you to show- I, I mean, I didn't ask because I didn't know it was going to happen, but I would have. Wait, what are you carrying? Wow, this music is actually really loud. I've got permission to force my way in. Gotta protect the peace and tranquility of the campus, after all. I'm gonna break this door down whether it's locked or not. Get back a little. <gasps> the second one is from Testy Robin. I'm tired of the reversible dust jackets. Come up with a more interesting bonus or I'm not buying your magazine anymore. Then don't buy it. Why would we want readers as low-minded as you anyway? Don't you think something is wrong with this trend among publishers of trying to outcompete each other through bonus items? A magazine should be judged by what's inside. That is where the competition lies. Do not be fooled by these frivolities. <clears throat> I can't talk. The real artistry lies sparkling within. That's as far as you go, na 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 Tori. Put your wings behind your head. What is the high school student doing with that thing? Did you know, mister? It's a must-have item for any fashionable teenage boy. A gun? I mean, yeah. We have you surrounded. Come quietly and don't try anything. Let's make this as nice as possible, shall we? I don't want to have to shoot you. Not very much, anyway. That rifle. Oh, I see. So you're with JB. Oh, very well. I shall withdraw for today. But one day, the school shall be mine. Darn it, there goes another window. If you're gonna go leaping out a window, at least open it first. That had to have hurt. Anyway, we've secured the broadcast room. We're short on time, so you should probably get started. Right, thank you, Yuya. Where's his little headphones? But where does he keep getting those things? Now then, let's try this again. <laughs> The how and why of St. Pigeonations. Here's the question box. Yay, Saki is going to be joining in. This time we've got questions from Westerners. Oh, hey! My English isn't very good, so Saki will be helping out. Already in high school and you still can't use English? Your future is bleak indeed. I'm not planning to go overseas. Oh, So it won't be that bad. I hope. Alright, first question. From 1SSFSX17. That sounds more like a password than a handle. What is Yoko's favorite weapon? The bow, the sword, or the spear? What is Yoko's favorite weapon? The bow, the sword, or the spear? Can you answer that, Kawada? Oh, he was reading it and then saying it in Japanese. I get it. So, probably when this was originally in Japanese, it said it in English first, and then this part would be in Japanese. Yoko's favorite weapon? Well, a few years ago, she really liked the bamboo pole, but I think lately she's been using the copper sword more. A copper sword for hunting? Wouldn't it be a bit dull for that? It doesn't cut very well, but she said it doesn't matter because she just bludges everything to death anyway. <laughs> Me. Alright, let's keep going. We're a little short on time thanks to a certain someone. This one's for you, Sakia. It's from Rabbit Doubt. Sakia, please let me touch your feathers. I want to touch your feathers. <laughs> I don't say that out loud. Never! Hey, translating it into English first. Or Japanese, I guess, since this is the English release. I don't actually need to hear it all, but if we started cutting the whole, char whole characters out of scenes just because language barrier jokes don't really work, then things would get pretty confusing pretty quickly, right? The fourth wall. It is shattered. Sakia, please let me touch your feathers. I want to touch your feathers. Why should I let myself be touched by common riffraff? That's too bad, Robert Doubt. Maybe he'll let you touch them if you became nobility. This one's anonymous. What are your thoughts on Brian Pigeon? Do you consider his blog to be quality literature? On second thoughts, maybe it'd be okay if you didn't bother repeating everything after all. Look here, peasant, I've got one job on this lousy show. It's stupid, but I'm going to do it. Is that clear? Okay, okay. Anyway, Brian. Wait, who? Don't you even know that, you ignoramus? 
He is a great pigeon from the la great land of Great Britain, the very first intellectual Columbid. If you remember, I actually talked about this a little bit in the original How to Have a Boyfriend debriefing. He, it's a blog run since about 2005 where he posts pictures of pigeons and it's actually hilarious. Go look up Brian Pigeon online for the good of us all. See? Oh, there he is. Whoa! But this blog is in English. English localization or no, I still can't read it. Of course it's in English. He lives in London. His posts may even count as fine literature. At the very least, they're culturally quite valuable. They will definitely leave a mark on avian history to come. Wow, he must be really important. I'll have to work hard on my English so I could read his blog. Here's the last one. It's anonymous, too. It's for San. I love you. Oh, because San loves you, too. Bye. Sakia, Sakia, I understood that. Oh, he was proud. Sakia, Sakia, I understood that. Don't act so proud, Neophyte. Well, I guess that's about it for today. Indeed, we shall have to cut this session short. It's almost time for the school to close. Let's make a smooth exit. Yep. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye, babies. I love you. All right. Let's do the next one. Spoilers ahead. Oh, great. Here we go. Spoilers. The how and why of St. Pigeonations. It's time to break out the question box. This is Kawada Ryota from class 2-3. Last time was a little exciting, wasn't it? I'm glad we didn't get dropped. This time we're doing a special feature on Bad Boy's Love. Oh, great. Oh, I'm so ready. Oh, yay. How fun. BBL, or Bad Boy's Love, is an extra-long truth scenario which was in included with the full version of the game. Today we'll be answering questions about BBL. So be warned, there will be spoilers. Alright, everyone, that's your cue. If you haven't completed it, turn this off. I don't recommend continuing with this if you haven't finished BBL yet. Yeah, me neither. Do you want to keep going? Keep going. I finished it. Alright, let's get started. This will be a little complicated, but I think I should explain where we are before jumping into the questions. Holiday Star takes place- Okay, good, that's going to answer some of my questions. In a happy world where the Bad Boys love route never began, during winter break and the third semester. So naturally, up until now, the questions have been answered by the peaceful, undisturbed Otome versions of each character. But because we're doing Bad Boy's Love this time, we'll be calling on the versions of the character who lived, or didn't live, through Bad Boy's Love. Oh, great. Oh, no. Just don't think about it too hard, and you'll be fine. In the end, it's just because, unlike books or movies, visual novels have all kinds of branches and possibilities. Even if it's a little odd for me to be saying that. Sorry, that was a little long. Questions, questions. This is from one Sora Ro so Wow. <laughs> Sora Wo. Was Hyoko re raised in an orphanage? How has she managed everything all this time? Hyoka, or uh, Diana, excuse me, isn't here, so I'll be answering for her again. Her parents did die a long time ago, but she was never taken in by an orphanage. She did live with my mother and me for a while, but she decided she'd rather live on her own. I did? I didn't know that. Living by one's own strength is a hunter-gatherer's pride, after all. I could never be like her. She's always so tough and cool, you know? On to the next question. This one is from Damarushi. For the doctor. What did you like so much about Professor Kawada? What? Professor Kawada? What was so appealing about a good-for-nothing dove like that who couldn't even take care of his own family? I'm gonna come beat you up. Who is this person? I'm ready. I'm gonna... beat you up. That's what it says, Doctor. Wait, wait, no, Doctor, stop! You can't just tear up the letters! Um... Uh, you can't put them through the shredder, either! Oh, it's completely destroyed! That is all. Ah, uh, that's not an answer, Doctor. Sorry, Damurushi. I guess the subject of my father is a bit- Oh, not- not Ryota himself, Ryota's dad, duh. It is a bit of a sensitive area with him. Dad never did come home much, though. I don't remember what kind of person he was, either. I wonder what kind of boss he was for the doctor. Hey, Doctor, wait! Was there something else? The next question is for you, too. Is just this one more. Could you please say- the contents may warrant repayment that the emergency room won't be able to fix, but very well. Are you planning to break into the third dimension to claim vengeance, Doctor? Then again, you probably could. Anyway, I'll read it. If you don't want to say anything, you don't have to. Let's not get anyone killed. Indeed. Though I can't guarantee that we won't. This is from Tony. About how many aliases have you had to date, Doctor? Would you mind telling me what a few of them are? I don't keep them lying around for use as party tricks. 
That doesn't answer the question, sir. I think it is enough. I simply use names as I need, in situations where it would be inconvenient for people to realize who I am, you see. Would revealing my names not then be quite inconvenient? That's true, but no one reading this will mind spoilers. I don't mean inconvenient for them. I mean inconvenient for me. I will be going now. Alright, bye! Good talk. Aw, oh, he's gone. You didn't even answer either of them, Doctor. Looks like you're having some trouble. Hey, babe! How you do- Oh, no. Seeing both of them on the same screen is a problem for me now. Yuya! How about I answer that question for him? You're always here just when we need you, Yuya. Or sometimes when I really don't need problems. I've been trailing him for quite some time, after all. I'll leak a little confidential information just for you. You're always ready to reveal state secrets just so we need them, Yuya. Well, that's a little harsh, isn't it? Anyway, moving right along. As you all know, his name as a member of the faculty of St. Pichinations, and his name as a medical doctor is Iwamine Shu, and his name as a researcher for the Hawk Party was Isa Soumra. That's the name I first knew him by. We also have evidence indicating that Ishiki Michio, the public prosecutor who died suddenly a few years ago, might be the same person. He's a prosecutor? Oh no. <laughs> oh no. That's not good. And finally, there's a theory that his real identity is of the heir to the Ichi Joe group, but that's still just a rumor. He has quite the history, doesn't he? It all seems a little excessive to me. In any case, the truth remains shrouded in darkness. Anyway, that's it for me. Can't keep the ladies waiting after all. Adieu. Thank you, Yuya. It's a little late now, but will you be okay? The doctor was awfully insistent about hiding those names, and he just blabbed all about them. But then again, he can take care of himself. It's not like the doctor could kill him or anything, even if he did find out. <sighs> oh, babe. How wrong you are. Next letter. It's from one Sanya for Nageki. Did you disappear entirely after Bad Boys left? Or are you living on inside Rio? That's creepy. Also, what would you have done if you've never been sick? Would you have gone to college? I want to know and I can't stop crying. Nageki will have to answer these himself. Yep. Sorry. But you're a really important figure in Bad Boy's Love, so we need to have you here. Sana was asking what happened to you after BBL. At the very least, we do know that I spoke to you when you woke up from hibernation. Right. Let's take another look at that scene. No! No, I don't want to! No, I don't want to see that! Mr. Kawada. Wait, did we see this before? Mr. Kawada. Miss Gray. Yeah, can you hear me? Morning is almost here. Wake up, Kawada. Gray? I told you I wouldn't go back on my word. That's Sakia. Do we finally get to know what happened? That scene appears in the special epilogue that you get if you play through a second time. Not exactly true. It's if you get all the other endings before it. And I do mean all of them. Like, including the normal and special ending division. You have to have 14 achievements before going into Bad Boy's Love to get that ending. Honestly, I can't imagine playing through it without that epilogue. Like, seriously, that would be horrid. That was a pretty bad spoiler. Are you sure it's okay to show that? There might be people who have cleared Bad Boy's Love but still haven't seen it. Oh! Sorry! Sorry! I wasn't thinking. What? Well, don't look! Don't look! It's a little late now. Anyway, as you can see, my consciousness still seems to be there. So maybe I haven't disappeared completely. That's still pretty vague. I don't exactly exist to begin with. It's a little hard to imagine something that doesn't exist disappearing. But then again, part of your body is inside mine now. So maybe you do exist after all. I'm trying to decide if that's cute or creepy. I don't know. I don't know what happens after the end of Bad Boys Love. Darn it! I was really hoping we were going to find out. Maybe I disappear later on, or maybe I end up sharing Mr. Kawada's body, which is creepy. Maybe if I do end up staying... I'd like to see Diana move on. And finally... Oh, he told him. I thought that said... Yeah, I thought that was my name. <laughs> I just wanted to talk about me. I'd like to see he thought he move on, and finally start living for himself. I have more to say about that, but I'm not going to say anything yet. Then I could disappear. It would be nice to see Professor... No okay, never mind, they just said it. Because Hitori is Kazuaki. Uh, Professor Nanaki living happily. He's been through so much. It wasn't all fun and games for me either. <laughs> yeah, but I definitely agree. How about the second question? Also, what would you have done if you'd never been sick? Would you have gone to college? I want to know and I can't stop crying. You can't stop crying? You know you can't change the past. Yeah, I know. I could stop crying. <laughs> you can't hope for a future which won't be allowed to come, either. Didn't you think about where you wanted to go in life, Nagagi? 
Not really. I never had a dream for what I wanted to be when I grew up or anything like that. If nothing had ever happened, I probably would have gone on to college, graduated, and thought about things from there. It is pretty hard to know where you'll be in a few years down the line. I haven't put any thought into my career path at all. I think I'd make a good museum curator, or a librarian, or a writer. I never really felt like writing books of my own. Being a curator could be interesting, though. I'll think about it. For the world where you're still alive. Yes, something like that. Is that all? Yeah, thank you, Nageki. Bye, babe. Love you. This last one is anonymous. It's for... Hey! Hitori! Hello, is this the recording room? Mr. Uzune! Please, come in, come in, have a seat. Tea and biscuits, how nice. Yes, this is very nice. Would it be alright if I brought some home? I'd like to give them to the children. Oh, yes, I think that would be fine. I'll wrap them up for you when we're done. Really? Oh, I'm so happy, thank you. He's certainly quite talkative. It's almost hard to believe that it's actually Professor Nanaki. Our last letter is addressed to you. I have a question for Hitori. You're supposed to have been good at studying, but were you able to go to school? You had your job as a lecturer, and after that you took care of the children. It certainly doesn't seem like you've had the time. I don't go. I'm enrolled, though. You're enrolled, but don't go? Is that... um... Are you a truant? No, no. I'm a distance student. Oh, of course. Everyone helps out with the housework, so I have more than enough time left to study. Even so, I'm a little worried about leaving them for so long. If you wouldn't mind, I think I should be going soon. He's a very caring guardian, too. My father could stand to take a leaf out of his book. Wow, Ryota! Throwing him down under the bus. I mean, warranted, probably, but seriously. Thank you so much, Hitori. Thank you for having me. It's almost like someone brought a painting of the ideal young man to life. I wonder if I'll grow up to be as pleasant of a person as him. <sighs> anyway, that's all for today. Thank you all so much for your letters. I don't know. I thought that was cool. I just, like, it kind of sucks. We're never really going to know how Bad Boy's Love actually ends. Like, I want to know what happens. Like, am I alive at the end? Because you see me talking with Ryota, kind of, like, in a consciousness kind of way. And... And, and Sakya calls out to me at the end, like, he knows I'm there, so, like, am I alive? Is Ryota okay? These are the questions that haunt me. But we can't think about that now because we're gonna go to the human form questions, and that's just really exciting to me. Let's do it. Please be... Oh. The How and Wives, St. Pagenations, here's the question box. Hello again. Everybody's favorite rock dev, Kawada Ryota from 2-3 here, you are my favorite. First off, thanks for playing all the way through story mode. That must have taken a while. Make sure to take a break if your eyes are tired, okay? Thanks, babe. Thanks to know you're looking out for me. I didn't check. I guess maybe these unlocked episodically as well? It could be. I'm not really sure. They're not? You're fine? Alright, let's go! This time we'll be doing a special feature on everybody's human forms. As you all know, we're birds, we have human designs too. They're just a bonus, or they're for convenience or something like that, though. So don't think about it too hard, okay? Alright, our first question is from Naginata. This one's for everybody. What color are your panties when you're in human form? These are the hard-hitting questions that fans of the game need to know, right? Gosh, I wonder why they want to know about that. Um, I'm wearing light gray today. Let's try asking the others. Wait. Good. On this day... Wow, thanks, Hell. I really needed that visual image. <laughs> Sakya's like, nope, not talking. Oh, shoot. <laughs> oh. Yeah, okay, we'll talk about that later. Oh. Oh. Yeah, okay. <laughs> she was like, nope. Nope. Uh, okay, what? Why? Why does... Why do half the people, a third of the people here not have underwear on? You know. Oh. Yeah, I figured. A lot of those weren't really answers. This next one isn't exactly about our human forms, but it fits the subject of pants. It's from Tatsu. You all wear trousers in human form, but do you wear them as birds, too? As you can see, we aren't wearing any. Clothes are for us for, as birds are only used for warmth, fashion, or ceremony, and aren't really mandatory at all. Alright, next question. This one's from Imari for, for Professor Nanaki. 
I feel like you probably engage in self-harm because you feel guilty about everything, so please show me what's underneath those heavy clothes, Professor. Uh, this one would be a little hard to just ask to his face. He is pretty well wrapped up with the coat and scarf, though. Wow, this is a sensitive topic, actually. I'm gonna, I need to put a trigger warning on this, maybe. I can't believe they would just do that without saying anything. Um, Professor. You're pretty heavily dressed in human form, sir. Doesn't it get hot during the summer? That's true. That's true. If I go to the supermarket in short sleeves during the summer, I feel like I'll freeze. Ah, yes, I know what you mean. Whenever I go shopping in short sleeves, I need to go running. Uh, I need to go running to the bathroom. Yes, but it's pretty warm at school, right? Is it? Or it is? Is it? I can't read. Don't you ever want to strip down a little? Uh, what? Real tip. Real tip. Not really. No. Hmm. I see. Is that all? I still have some grading to do, so I'll be going now. Uh, I'm sorry. I just can't bring myself to look at my homeroom teacher and say take it off. Anyway, on to the last question. This is another one for the doctor. Maybe he gets so many because he's so mysterious? It's from Kasami. Yuya's glasses are probably just for show. Hey. Well, I don't really mind either way. But what about you, doctor? If your vision is poor, just how poor is it? Yes, Yuya's are just for show. Alright, I'm okay with that. Every so often he'll break a pair and it doesn't bother him at all. <laughs> yeah, that's right, babe. Mwah, love you. Oh, Yuya. The doctor left as soon as we did that question about panties. You know all kinds of things about him, though, right? Do you know how his eyesight is? But of course. Know your enemy and know yourself, and you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. It seems to be pretty bad. If you take them away, he's practically helpless. You tried taking his glasses away? Hardly. I'm not that much of a daredevil. Uh, of course they did it. I should have known. Ah, I see. It was bad enough that he started feeling pretty sick, too. They were returned promptly. Sort of like how wearing glasses that don't match your eyesight can make you dizzy. Got a wobbly Oh, God, you guys are horrible. Well, we don't know the exact numbers, but it sounds like the doctor's vision is bad enough that in his human form, he can't get by without his glasses. I guess that might be good to know. That's all for today. Thanks for dropping by again. Next episode will be our last one, so there will be a bonus. Don't miss it. A bonus? How exciting. Let's find out about that extra large edition. Oh, good god. Alright, let's do this. The Howl and Why of St. Pigeonations. It's time for the question box. Hello, everybody. This is Kawada Ryota from Class 2-3. This is our last question answering session. We've come a long way, but it's gone by so fast. I'll be sad to see it end. Me too. Anyway, we've got a bonus question this time. Sit back and enjoy the ride. Alright, first one. From Suzu... <sighs> Suzukawa. I don't know why I just stopped in the middle of that word. <laughs> for Diana. You love udon, but what kind is your favorite? I'll be answering questions for Diana again. I was wondering about this a while ago too, so I asked her. She said, if I had to pick one, it would be kake udon. It's the most basic of the most basic, which is udon and broth, nothing else. She said she couldn't let herself forget the true spirit of the noodle, after all. She orders whatever she feels like at the cafeteria, but if it's her first time at a restaurant, she'll usually get kake udon. I guess maybe kake udon is the best gauge of a chef's udon powers? The next one's for Sakia from Tsukimu. Your mother taught you that mansions will always have ninjas in them, but did she teach you anything else? But of course, she taught me all I would need to know to live in Japan. And you're always so studious, too. What kinds of things do you know about, aside from ninja and shrine offerings and fallen warriors? Let us see. I know about sushi. Ah, that's definitely a point of Japanese pride. You're an aristocrat, so you go to the really fancy sushi places, right? Indeed, I've been to those places with the little conveyor belts. Those are not... those are not... high quality. Question mark? Not the ones without the little conveyor belts? Do you mock me? Why should I go to a sushi place without a little conveyor belt? Uh, um, but my mother taught me this. Sushi places with the little conveyor belts have invested in their establishments and combine entertainment with cuisine. They are higher class than places without the little conveyor belts. Um, I see. I guess you usually end up spending more time in the ones with little conveyor belts, maybe, I think. Alright, next we have two for Professor Nanaki. Yes, let's have them. The first one is from Lena Lul. You're always falling asleep, Professor. Do you spend all your time at home sleeping, too? 
Diana guessed that you spend about, I was trying to, that's processing, spend about 97% of your time at home asleep, but how much is it really? If you're always asleep, I worry that you're not getting enough to eat. So, how much do you sleep at home, sir? Don't worry, Lena Lul. I make sure to eat. Probably not 97% then. Mm, I do fall asleep when I'm having dinner sometimes, though. And in the bath? Please make sure you don't drown yourself sleeping in the bath, sir. The next is from Shiroi. Is the dark spot by your chain a shadow, Professor? Or is it a marking? I've been wondering for a long time. We've got a lot of people asking about this. Which is it, sir? It's not a shadow. It's a common marking on male quails. It's right where the shadow of your head would be, though, so the, uh, though, so, sir. It's right where the shadow of your head would be, though, so it's a little confusing. I don't know why I was reading a sir in there when there wasn't one. Try searching for some pictures of button quails. You'll find plenty of quails with a marking by the beak, just like me. Thank you, sir. The next one is for you, yeah. Oh, yay. Salutations. I'll answer anything for a lady hoping to get to know me better. Um, I mean, what time are you free tonight? Um, sorry, it's anonymous, so we can't really tell if it's a lady or not. Clearly, it's just a shy young mademoiselle, unable to ask in person, but determined to have an answer. Well, I wonder. Alright, let's just go with that. The question is, we've never seen you surrounded by squealing girls, so have you actually got it, Yuya? That's a little harsh, isn't it? Uh, yeah, this is definitely one that would be a little hard to ask with your name attached. But asking the questions that are hard to ask is my job. You're awfully dedicated. I'll answer in full candor, too. Alright, time to bite the bullet. Have you actually got it, Yuya? A man who's got it never says he does. Is that a sort of backwards way of saying you have got it? I wonder if we can call that full candor. You satisfied for now? Okay, let me answer that for him. He's definitely got it. Let me know if another lady comes calling. And you, you should just not leave. I'm right here. Well, I guess for now we can just say he's probably got it, whatever it is. The next one is for San. <laughs> he's already here, of course. This is from someone called I Wish I Were Pudding. What kind of house do you live in, Okasan? Sure, um, no, but maybe someone else will. Ah, And where is your house, Okasan? Wow. Really? A, a mansion? What? Seriously? Oh. Question mark, question mark, question mark? Um, why a birdcage in the mansion? Okay. I'll, uh, I can't picture that, but alright. Uh, well, I'm not sure I entirely understand, but I guess Son lives in a birdcage inside a huge mansion. I'd like to go visit him sometime and see exactly what sort of arrangement he has. Alright, time for the extra. This one's for Mrs. Zami. <gasps> Are you here, Mrs. Zami? Babe! Oh, look at you! Oh my god! Don't... Babe! Oh, you're so good! I miss you! This one's from Fushou. You are way too cool in a number of ways, Zami. I've completely fallen for you. I'll follow you to the ends of the earth and back. You want to become my protege, kid? Come to my takoyaki cart when the sun begins to set if you've got the guts. I'll show you how to ride like the wind. There's a question for Mr. Rabu as well, but would you like to answer it? A question for him? Yeah, I'll take it. Um, this is from Shinkan. How is your newlywed life with Mrs. Zami so far, Mr. Rabu? She orders you around day and night, right? What kind of idiotic question is that? Don't go prying into other people's private stuff, you brat! Ow, don't kick me! Carved into your soul, kid. No, peeping into my love nest. Oh, Jesus. I should've known. Ah, Mrs. Zami's kicks really hurt. I don't know if she orders them around or not, but I think they get along pretty well. Alright, it's time for our final letter. This one is anonymous. I can't wait for the next question box series. Really? I'm so glad, though I... I don't know if there will be another one. There might be, though. It's still up in the air. If there are plans for another, it'll be mentioned on the official site and blog. Check back every once in a while, okay? Alright, that's it for the Holiday Star Radio section. Thanks for asking... I messed up on the very last line. Thanks for sticking around all the way to the end. This has been the How and Why of St. Pagenations, brought to you by yours truly, Kawada Ryota. I love you! And we got an achievement for that. Radio Star. And I think I forgot to mention that after we listened to the first one, we got an achievement for that called Radio Chick. Uh, so I think the next thing that we should do is check out the gallery. 
Last time, uh, in the original Holiday Star... Okay, so this looks like, um, all the things that we've seen... Oh, wait! What the... What is this? Ooh! <laughs> this is Mr. Nenene? He's not bad looking. He looks nice. Someone told me that he would definitely look like a beauty boy if I looked at this picture, and I can definitely agree. Um, the rest of this... Why am I missing a picture? Why am I missing a picture? Why is... Why? Why am I missing something? If someone could tell me what happened to that, I would appreciate it. I don't know. I, it's in episode two, I guess, but... I don't know. Uh, and then we have... This. Oh, wow. Oh, we do get all of these that I liked. Oh, that's so... Why, why am I missing things? Um, okay, so let's look at everything we got here. Oh, is that Albert? Holy crap, he is very nice looking. I would like an assassin like that. Uh, here's Leone. That's pretty cool. I was wondering why they didn't give him a human, like, they didn't include this in the last one, but that's pretty badass. And here is, oh, there's a zombie and Rabu and, Ke oh, there he is, he is an old man. But he's so elegant, so... <laughs> I love it! Look at Azami, she looks so cool. Um, okay, let's see. Aw, uh, these are so cool looking. I love these so much, like, I immediately fell in love with them, you saw. I don't know... I've gotta be missing something big here. I'm gonna read through all of these. Um, I was gonna wait and talk about it in the debriefing, like, my, um, my thoughts on all of the picture books. But, I mean, I can do it now, because we're going to read them all. The Lying Picture Book. Once there was an Okosan. There was something that Okosan wanted to find, no matter what. So he ran to the ends of the earth. The Okosan was very fast. He could run anywhere. He ran everywhere. At the end of the earth, there was a giant hole in the ground. The Okosan fell into the hole. No one remembers the Okosan now. Poor Okosan, poor Okosan. So, this obviously, this one is a little less probably symbolic than the rest of them, but I mean, obviously, we're talking about how Okosan is searching for something, and the true pudding, which we've alluded to many times, may not actually be pudding, but rather some kind of bigger concept. So, it really, honestly, probably could be anything with Okosan, but I think it may be his biggest fear is being forgotten, and maybe just not being paid attention to. And maybe that's why he acts out so much and he's so crazy, because he doesn't want people to forget about him. That's like a thing. So, the king was playing onto his fear of being forgotten. Well, it goes back to the screen! Why did- That's a weird sound. Uh, let's see. Do this one? The unenclosed picture- The unenclosed picture book. Okay, this is the one I still don't really understand. Once there was a chrysalis, the chrysalis was all alone. It didn't know how to grow up, so it stayed a chrysalis forever. This chrysalis has to be Shu. One day a butterfly came along, which is probably Ryota's dad. The butterfly said, let's be friends. I can show you how to become a beautiful butterfly like me. Implying, like, like, because Ryota's dad was Shu's boss. The Lonely Chrysalis was happy, because it wasn't alone anymore. But, its friend the butterfly disappeared soon after. And that's true. Ryota's dad did disappear. We found that out in Bad Boy's Love. The Lonely Chrysalis was alone again. It didn't know where to go anymore. It didn't know what it wanted to do anymore. The Lonely Chrysalis shrank and hardened, implying that maybe Shu used to be a better person, but after Ryota's dad disappeared, maybe not. Nothing will ever come out of it now. Poor Chrysalis. Poor Chrysalis. I've always been of the opinion that maybe there could have been something more going on in the relationship between Ryota's dad and Shu, at least from Shu's end, maybe not from um, Ryota's dad's end, but... So I think, 
Ryota's dad had a bigger influence on Shu's life than maybe he himself realizes, and the uh, his disappearance caused Shu to change big time and become the bird he is today. If I'm getting that one wrong, please tell me, because this is the one I'm not sure about, but that's just my opinion. Alright, I think I talked about this one a little bit in the actual playthrough. The decorated picture book. Once there was a beautiful piano. This is Sakia. The piano was decorated with gemstones and all the colors of the rainbow. Oh, how it sparkled and it glittered. Everyone told it it was beautiful. What a beautiful piano. No one had ever seen such a wonderful piano before. The piano's owner was very pleased and decorated the piano even more. Everyone in all the land praised the piano's beauty. No one from anywhere wanted to hear its voice. But the gemstones were too heavy, so heavy, and one day it, they crushed the piano flat. Poor piano. Poor piano. So this, I think, has a double meaning for Sakia, and he obviously didn't really realize it uh, when he was stuck in the dream. So what I think is that Sakia is the piano, obviously. He is being showered on with good stuff, like his rank, his nobility, titles, and all of that, and they, and it goes in two directions. The first direction is pretty obvious. Uh, as we learned in Hatful Boyfriend, Sakia is a musical prodigy, and his father will not recognize his music as like an actual career choice. So Sakia was never allowed to really uh, pursue his musical talent until we kind of saved him from that, and we let him live with us, and kind of helped him pursue his dreams and so that's one aspect and then also it could just be referring to the fact that no one actually really listens to him maybe just in his family or in nobility in general like um he's just there as an ornamental feature he's not there to be listened to or respected for his ideas or anything other than his title or his appearance and so eventually that could crush him and we just have to hope that doesn't happen This is the interesting one. The black and white picture book. I will admit that um, a couple people, I think, tried to help me out in the comments with this one, but this was because uh, I wasn't really processing during the actual time of playing, but during editing, I did fully understand this. Once upon a time, there lived a white dove and a black dove. As we learned in the finale, both of these are Ryota. The white dove loved the sunflower. The black dove loved the sunflower, too. The sunflower is me. What a beautiful sunflower it was. It was warm and bright as the sun itself. The sunflower would go out and play with the doves all day long. This was probably when we were growing up, and then up until we went to school together. But one day the sunflower made friends with a star. The star, as you probably figured out, is Nageki. And after that, the sunflower always went out at night. A.K.A. I went to the library and didn't spend as much time with Ryota anymore. Without the sunflower, as bright as the sun, to light them, the days became dark. The white dove knew how nice the night star was and became sad and more sad and cried. This is the nicer side of Ryota, who's kind of friends with Nageki and wants everyone to just get along and be happy. The black dove thought the night star should turn into a shooting star and go disappear somewhere far away. This is the angry side of Ryota that wants things to be the way they used to be. Things would be better then. But in the end, both doves froze in the darkness and died. Poor doves. Poor doves. This one really struck a chord with me in editing, because this one is probably, before you play it, when you're just reading it for the first time, the one that makes the least sense. But... After everything that goes down with Ryota, you kind of understand it afterwards, and then you feel really terrible about yourself like I do. So, yeah. This was a dark one. I don't want to think about this, but hopefully we kind of resolve this in the end of the game where we're going to go on a date with Ryota. I hope. I don't want that to happen. I was pushing the shift button instead of the arrow button. Go me. The King's Picture Book. Yeah, okay. What is this one? The King's Picture Book. Obviously, this is about the king. Once there was a poor little quail. 
One day the quail was tricked by a bad bird and killed. So this quail is the original... Okay, we're getting serious spoilers here, okay? This quail is the original Kazuaki. The bad bird is Hitori, who is now Kazuaki, kind of. The quail was put onto the train through the night sky, along with the other birds who had died. Where is the train going? There must be a terrible place at the end of the line. The quail was so scared and so afraid it thought its little heart would burst. But the train stopped for a little while. Apparently, even galactic trains have to wait for signals. The quail was too scared to stay on the train, so it jumped off. There it was a dark, dark room there. There was nothing in it but a chair and a little candle. There was no one else there. The quail sat on the chair and cried. Why did this happen? It was betrayed by its friend and forced onto a strange train. What would happen next? The quail thought and thought and made a station. Maybe if there is a station, someone will come by to play. The quail made a station and lit the candle and waited. I mean, this is pretty straightforward. Time passed, birds came. The dark room became a beautiful kingdom. The candle became a grand lighthouse. The chair became a royal throne. And the quail became the king. Those who came to the kingdom became one with the king. The king is all, and all are the king. No one is hurt, and no one has any sad thoughts. The birds of the holiday star lived happily. Happily ever after. How nice. How very nice. That one's pretty straightforward, and I don't think it requires much explanation. Like, that's the story of how the holiday star came to be. That's it. Now we have this one, which I'm pretty sure... Picture book! Scribbles! 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 Anger scribbles! You lied to me. So this is obviously, um... The king being pissed at, um, Nanaki for lying about, you know, everything. Angry Scribbles? They are so angry. That. That was definitely probably the most powerful moment for me. Like, that is... I don't even know. So we got an achievement for that. Uh, we got an achievement called The King's Set, and that's for reading the King's Picture Book. We still don't have this one either. What is this? Uh, okay. So, I'm not sure how to get that. But, at any rate, that's all I wanted to do in this episode. So, uh, if... I'm missing something, though. Hang on, I'm gonna do some... Look, there it is! Ah, I knew I was missing something. This probably comes from the radio episodes, but there was a thing that I was missing, and this might be where that missing image comes in. So, uh, we're gonna do that. Let's finish this. Short episode. The day the night slept, after, after. The story consists of unused scenes from part four. Please enjoy this collection of things which couldn't fit into the main story. Think of it as being like the bonus section or bonus scenes on a DVD. How appropriate that we're finishing off with this. Please enter your name. Yes, I would. Oh my god, I thought the game was gonna crash again. I was gonna get so mad. Is Gray Diana okay? I am. Thank you for asking. The conductor's too warm. Uh, oh. What's wrong, Diana? Ryota, what are you doing on the train? Do you have a stomachache? The silver field was a little cold. No, that's not it. Oh, wait, why am I reading everyone? I should only be reading myself. It's not that my stomach is cold, I'm just feeling kind of fuzzy. Uh, no, Okasan. No, my head is. Something's bothering me. It's... Um, excuse me. No, I... Oh, I... No! Um, I really feel like I've seen you before. Have we met somewhere? What? Miss, are you hitting? <laughs> no, I'm not hitting on you. No! Maybe we've met, maybe... 
it depends on me? Could you step out of that shadow for a moment? <laughs> I knew it! <laughs> you know, I had the sneaking suspicion this time that that was who it was. Oh! Mr. Death. Yeah, I kinda. I, yeah, he and I go all the way back to the demo version. I'll be counting on you next time something happens. Sorry, I mean, I did make you kill me like three times the first time I played Hatchful Boyfriend, so. What? But that's why we're friends! Yeah, yeah don't get on my bad side, Saki, you heard me. Huh, oh, that was good. Good man. Oh. I already like it. I already like it. The new season is almost here. I'd better start checking for any Hawk Party spies and the new students. Salutations, Mr. One. Sakazaki Yuya. What is it? I don't recall sending for you. Well, that's a little cold. Can't I drop by just to see your beautiful face? You are no longer a student at this school. Oh, no! You should avoid any unnatural conduct. As much as I love music, it just got really loud. Nothing unnatural about a college student getting nostalgic for his old high school. Everyone knows how much I love this school. Nothing suspicious about it. Anyway, I came to deliver a letter. A letter? New orders? No, it's from Nanatori. A letter of intent? It doesn't look like it. He addressed this little package to you. Hmm. Let's have a look. To the Soaring Wings of Special Intelligence Division Zero, Leone JB. May your organization grow in prosperity and success with the coming season. I pray you've been well through the colder months of the year. I am deeply grateful for your taking time from your busy schedule to see me off the other day. I thank you from the bottom of my heart for your kind consideration. Therefore, I have obtained a humble gift from the High Society Seagull Department Store to express my gratitude. This is a scam. This is not real. I know you were quite busy with the coming of the new school year, but please take care not to catch cold in this chilly spring weather. It's probably like a bug. Your servant, the Black Advocate, Technical Research Consultant, Nananantori. That's some pretty stiff business writing. You saw him off after everything the other night? He's on the surveillance list, after all. I gave him a ride home. The package doesn't seem to have any explosives. Madeline's Cheesecake and Financier. I don't know how, how to pronounce that, but I know it's food. Pretty standard stuff for a pastry assortment. Hmm. Well, he did go to the trouble of having them sent. No point in saying no. Are these poisoned? We'll run some tests, and if they come up clean, I'll put some coffee on. <laughs> okay. Deal. As long as we're running tests, then it's fine. Get well soon. Da da. Da da. Yep. Hi, guys. This place. Yeah, no, it's spring, guys. In about eight months. That's actually almost accurate. Well, it's a, it's about... What month is it? About ten months. <laughs> oh no! Don't starve them! Ah! Hmm... <laughs> the nice big fossil? Yeah, that means a lot to him, even if he does not want to tell you. Yes. Wait, are we gonna- oh, is he gonna talk about it? Something important. No. Not particularly. Uh-oh, is he gonna let them? Someone scratched stuff into this fossil? It's no good now. It's scratched? Let me see it for a moment. There's a name carved on the back. To Isa, don't forget to eat dinner. Oh, That must be the picture I'm missing. I know. Eat if you want to. Lunch! To the Southern Cross. Oh, yes, we're going to see them. Ah, Stardust sugar cubes are so sweet. Mm. You have some too, Your Majesty. Sweet food, warm the soul, make your troubles fly away. Weh. Nibble. Nibble. Ah, uh, 
I'm scared. Scared? Of what? We don't know what we'll find at the next star. That's been true ever since we were on the Earth. No one knows what the future will bring. We don't know if it'll be fun. Your Highness, Your Highness, let's have a pillow fight and talk about our crushes at the next star. I like this bird. We should be friends. Okay. Aw, uh, can we see that? Is that part of the bonus? You can't just wait around forever. Fun is something you have to go out and find for yourself. We're all good friends here. Tomorrow will be a good day. Tomorrow will be a good day. Except for this one picture, which I'm missing. I don't know where it is, but... Oh, what is... What is this? This is what I was expecting! Thanks for playing. And as the king goes off into the stars to have some new adventures with his new friends, I'm gonna have to go have some new adventures too. Hopefully, you guys will stay along for the ride. I'll see you on Saturday for the Holiday Star Blind debriefing. And then, I'll see you in about a week for something new. What's not something too new? You'll see what I mean. I'll see you then. Bye!